Tonight, House Republicans got together for a forum to hear from the new batch of speaker candidates, and one dropped out, leaving eight Republicans hoping to win the speaker's gavel. And until someone does, Congress is paralyzed. It is not funny. They're unable to take up the president's request for funding that includes billions in support to Israel and Ukraine. House Republicans are expected to hold another internal vote tomorrow morning, but who knows what will come of that. But here's the good news. I have the perfect people to help try to make sense of it. Former Missouri Senator and MSNBC political analyst, my dear friend Claire McCaskill, Mark McKinnon is here in person, former advisor to both George W. Bush and John McCain. He's also among the co-hosts of The Circus on Showtime. And Stuart Stevens is here, a veteran of the Mitt Romney and George W. Bush presidential campaigns. He is now with the Lincoln Project. And his newest book, which we've been talking about all summer, is now here. The Conspiracy to End America, Five Ways My Old Party is Driving Democracy to Autocracy. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Claire, you, I'm turning to you first. Even with this internal vote tomorrow, do you see any end in sight with this speaker vote pick? Well, I'll tell you, Emmer lost some votes tonight when Chris Christie said he'd be great. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I think... I think the problem they're going to have is there's three questions that people want answered. One, um, did you believe that the American voters' choice should have been affirmed? Secondly, should the government shut down? And third, should we fund Ukraine? And the problem is when you answer those three questions, you've got eight to ten people who are going to feel very strongly that if they're not answered the right way, they won't vote for that speaker. And then you've got eight to 10 people um, that think that they have to be answered exactly the opposite way. And they can't afford to lose eight to 10 votes. So I, I don't know how this is going to turn out. I think it's going to be the darling of MAGA, uh, Donalds, Byron Donalds, uh, somebody who's been around Washington for 10 minutes versus uh, Tom Emmer, probably. Maybe Austin Scott will stay in for a few rounds. But I think those are the three that have critical mass in terms of support. Uh, the question is, will those people, those appropriators and those defense hawks, will they give up on the things they believe in? And because I kind of believe Matt Gates and his crazy caucus isn't going to give up. Maybe I'm just completely naive, but six of the eight remaining candidates, Mark, voted to overturn the 2020 election. On what planet are we calling this roundup middle-of-the-road Republicans? Well, it's not middle-of-the-road Republicans, but it's Republicans who reflect the voters, uh, the Republican voters in the primary. I mean, those are predominantly those voters who are people that believe that the election was stolen. So they reflect the base of the Republican Party. This all happened because uh, Kevin McCarthy gave away his soul to get the speakership, and uh, by, by agreeing to this motion to vacate, that's Chekhov's gun, right? That's the theory where you introduce a gun in the first act, somebody's going to use it by the third <laughs> act, and Matt Gates did. And so as long as they have those rules, it's, it's hard to see how uh, there's ever going to be a speaker that really reflects a broad coalition. And given all of that, Stuart, and what we've seen in the last three weeks, even if somebody gets over the line, even if they choose someone, is this house even governable? No, it's not. And, and more importantly, they're just showing that the country is, that they can't govern the country. That's what's happened to the Republican Party. It's collapsed as a governing party. There's really no principles that can unite the party. I mean, there was a time not that long ago, you could get them and say, we have to elect a speaker because we have important stuff to do. So what do they need to elect a speaker for? To further investigate Hunter Biden's laptop? There's no big principles that hold them together. So they're really not a governing party anymore. And for those of us who worked in the party, it's kind of a sad thing, but it's true. Claire, let's talk about this unity pledge, because Republican Congressman Mike Flood says all the candidates for speaker have signed his unity pledge, promising to support whoever the conference nominates. What is your take on that, given what we've seen over the last few weeks? I don't see unity anywhere. Yeah, I mean, it's a nice little um, trick. Um, it, it's like a party trick. Uh, That's part, a boring Pardon party. the double entendre there. <laughs> yeah, um, but it, it really doesn't say anything because we all know what happened with Jordan's support of Scalise. It wasn't real, and everybody in the caucus felt it. 
um, the minute he didn't win on the first ballot, basically Jordan told him you're out. You don't get a chance to go around and get more votes and put pressure on people. You're done. Um, my votes are walking. Uh, so, I, I, yeah, they'll sign this. But I don't think I've never known a piece of paper to create unity when there isn't unity. And it's pretty obvious. You have the most of the Republican Party wants to burn it all down. There are a small number of Republicans that still want to govern, but they're being overwhelmed by the base of their party and by the elected officials in their party and by the leader of their party who wants to burn down every institution that we respect in this country. And now that happens to include even their own institution. Well, that is what Steve Bannon said he wanted to do, burn it all down. And you have to wonder, is he the puppet master behind all of this? Mark, you actually spoke to Congresswoman Nancy Mace from South Carolina. She was one of the eight who voted to oust Kevin McCarthy. And I want to share a bit of that interview from the circus. Watch this. We need to be the adult in the room and come together and represent the people, giving everybody a voice. Well, else to have a speaker. You've got to have a speaker. Well, you can't vote on anything on the floor until you have a speaker. And you guys are in the majority. Yeah. So... Yeah, I mean, if it, you, if it were up to me, done? if it were up to me, we would have locked ourselves in a room in the first 24 hours and not left the, the hill until we had it figured out. This has been the least productive session of Congress in 30 years. But aren't you guys going to get blamed for that? Well, since, I mean, since you hold the house? I'm blaming us for that. I, I mean, like, for real. She is one of the key Republicans who ignited this chaos. Like, what did you make of what she had to say? And I mentioned Steve Bannon. She and Matt Gates have been regulars on his podcast no, over the last that's few weeks. Amazing. I mean, she, she referred to it on the show, as she said, that the house is like the Game of Thrones. Well, she's Cersei Lannister, for goodness <laughs> sake. I mean, she, this is... The Republicans caught the car, right? And when Matt Gates, you know, believe me when he says what he wants to do, he's more interested in being on TV than governing. They wanted to burn the house down, and they, the, the, the problem is they have done that now, and we're starting to see the consequences. They don't have any interest in really governing. They just wanted to stop government from working. But now that that's what's happening, and now we're going to see the consequences. The Freedom Caucus put out a statement saying none of them should leave Washington until they elect a speaker. What do you think about that? <laughs> I, I don't want to be in that room. Um, you know, the problem is not that they're not spending enough time together. The problem is that they are spending time together, and they all hate each other. <laughs> and there's nothing that, that can... That's horrible. <laughs> well, it's, it's a horrible time, and the party, it's, it's just in a terrible place. And so it, it really is sort of, you know, I call it Game of Thrones. It, it's also Lord of the Flies. I mean, it's like Kevin McCarthy thought he was Ralph, and he ended up being Piggy. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's true. And it, they're just, uh, it's a group of people that are pretty unlikable for the most part. Then how did they get elected? You know, there's a lot of people in Congress that are the people who, in the fifth grade, really wanted to be elected homeroom president. And it really meant a lot to them. And couldn't. <laughs> yeah. And, and when they lost, they were angry about it. And so they said, I didn't win student council president in the fifth grade, so I'd like to be a U.S. Yeah. senator. And America said yes. Well, the Congress is worse. You know, <laughs> and there's something about the Republican Party right now that is drawing these kind of weird characters and elevating them. Weirder than you two. <laughs> like, it, it, like we're, you were part normal. of a different weird era. There's now a new weirder era. They've raised the bar on weird. <laughs> yes.